everyone, it's Maggie here. I'm a behavioral specialist with Pets in Need, and today I'm going to show you some exercises that you can do right now to help your dogs better prepare for when they're left alone. Before I begin, I want to talk a little bit about what separation anxiety is and what it simply isn't. A lot of owners misinterpret their dog's behavior as separation anxiety. It is very normal for your dog to experience anxiety when being left alone, especially if we haven't practiced games to help improve their coping skills with being left, as well as um, you know games to just feel more comfortable with being left alone. Um, clinical separation anxiety is a whole different beast. You're more likely to see symptoms like excessive drooling uh, or licking. Um, you might see things like uh, you know licking themselves until they're creating hot spots. Um, or even chewing on themselves where it's creating injury and self-mutilation. Um, if you think that your dog may have clinical separation anxiety, I recommend that you reach out to your veterinarian as well as consult a certified separation anxiety trainer to help you address these more serious issues. For my first exercise, I'm going to show you a really easy game where we're going to scatter treats. So I'm going to start by scattering some treats and I'm going to slip out of sight for just a moment, and the second that I'm out of sight, if the dogs aren't reacting, I'm going to click and treat. I'm going to do this so quickly that the dogs don't even really have a chance to realize that I've left, and that's a really important part of this. The reason that I'm using a clicker in lieu of, say, a marker word like yes, is because the sound carries. When I start to um, make this exercise a little bit more difficult and start leaving the house, that'll be much more effective because I want to be clicking when I leave and the dogs are engaging in self-occupying exercises versus rewarding them when I return back into the home. So I'm going to start by scattering these treats a little bit. And I'm going to duck out of sight. I'm going to click. And I'm going to reward. And I'm going to do several repetitions like this where it's a little bit easier. Scattering my treats. And treating. So one thing you guys might have noticed right away is that Bob showed significantly more anxiety during this exercise than Ralph. Bob is our rescue dog. He has been through multiple homes and he, because of that, is at more risk developing separation anxiety. If you notice that your dog is experiencing slight anxiety while practicing this exercise, I recommend using a higher value treat um, to do this exercise, um, ducking out of sight for even less time or even simply walking a few steps away, treating, um, uh, and then returning. So if you need to make this easier by breaking it down into further steps, that's absolutely okay. So we're going to try that again. Now, I am doing this with two dogs. I would use extreme caution while doing this uh, with, with two dogs, just in case there are uh, resource guarding issues that you may not be aware of. There we go. Starting to show a little less anxiety. I'll try it again. I increased the length of time there. For my next exercise, I'm going to do a very similar game, but I'm going to be using occupying toys. In these cons, I have peanut butter. He's pretty excited about it. It's also really accessible peanut butter. So these aren't frozen conks. This is readily available to occupy them right away. So I'm going to go ahead and present them with those conks. And I'm going to make this a little bit more difficult. I am going to leave the house for a second. So I'm, they've got their conks. I'm going to sneak away. and clicked outside and I'm returning back to treat. Once your dogs are feeling comfortable with this exercise, I recommend uh, increasing the time slowly to maybe 
one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, and so forth to help teach your dogs essential coping skills for when we go back to work. 